Now that I finally got this uh, Tommy Tutor, or uh, I'm guessing it's pronounced maybe Puta or Puta, I'm not quite too sure, uh, in Japan, this was a 1982 computer made by Tomy. It is very, very architecturally close to the TI 994A. Um, I've gotten this one here from Japan, and I've actually made a, a few modifications to it. When I got it, one of the video RAMs was having issues, and it showed up as corrupted characters on the screen. So I actually uh, went in and ordered some replacement new old stock video RAMs and some sockets and replaced uh, two of them. I thought that they were uh, going bad, and that seemed to bring the machine back to life. The machine itself actually came with these weird little joysticks here, and these are these are really weird, you know, joy discs, I like to call them, I guess, because, you know, there's no real indication where you're supposed to press other than up, down, left, right, you know, you're kind of guessing here. Um, but these are different, they have like actually two buttons, um, uh, select left and select right, SL and SR, and the keyboard on this thing pretty much is, you know, it's Japanese and English. Um, anyway, these, these joysticks are crazy. Um, I actually have a really cool cartridge at the back of this thing um, called a, uh, uh, I guess, a 3D cartridge adapter. This is what's on the bottom here. And this actually lets me play larger size Tomy cartridges, um, as well as it gives me the opportunity to change between the Japanese software and the North American software on this unit. This little cartridge up here that's plugged into it is a uh, cartridge that uh, was made homemade by, uh, I believe, Tanam over in Japan. And it's got two games on it. It's got TI Scramble, which is a port of the Scramble game that uh, Rasmus did for the TI 994A. And the other selection selected by the jumper is a little game called Door Door, uh, which was another port of uh, an Enix game. Um, you know them now as Square Enix. Um, I have a little step down transformer right here because this is a 100 volt unit. This is not a 120 volt computer. So uh, if I want to keep it safe, I'm going to go ahead and, and bring down the voltage to 100 volts. Um, standard audio video cable. I, I took out the RF modulator. There was an RF modulator in here that I took out when I disassembled the computer. It actually um, only worked on channels one and two, and I still couldn't get it to work on two here in the U.S. So it, uh, it went uh, the way of the dodo. Um, so, only other modification I've done on this is, like I said, I hated those joysticks. So, I found the pinout for um, a regular joystick like this. And it actually works really well. The only thing is, I only get the select left. These, these two buttons are the same button. Um, select left is uh, for both of them. So, if I get to a game that needs the select right, um, I left a couple of uh, cables in here that I can probably hotwire a a right button, you know, on this if I had to. So um, let's go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna power you on. And this is the United States BIOS. Um, you notice that it's all in English and it's the little bars on the side. So I'm actually gonna go here. I'm gonna shut this thing off, and I'm gonna switch this little jumper here. This little jumper is now going to change it to the Japanese BIOS. And you notice now, Japanese characters, the title screen's slightly different. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to put it back on the U.S. for right now. And there's some other jumpers on this card, too. There's a, there's a 1632 uh, jumper, which gives you the size of the, of the ROM um, that can help or hinder you getting basic working, which I believe is in one of these uh, images. And you have a kill switch, which basically kills this little thing and lets you use what's inside the computer, um, from what I understand. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it back on here and show you um, what happens when you actually hit a key here. So there was three options on the North American Tutor, and this actually does not work, not all these work well. Um, you had a graphic, um, selection and this graphic selection was a very weird little graphical designer type of app and um, I don't believe I've got this working correctly I probably have to change the, the jumper and I believe the same thing goes with basic too um, 
So if I go down here and I go to basic, see I just get something at the top blinking and I hit return and it does this. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it off. <laughs> and this is what the jumper set to 16 and the US BIOS by the way. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to gain. And this particular game, this is Door Door. And this was a uh, port made by uh, Tani Yaru of the Xenix game back from the early 80s. So I'm going to go ahead and, and hit the fire button here. And your goal here to get the monsters in the door, and it's, this is not as easy as it looks. I can only get past like the first few levels here. And I usually die on this one here. And you notice there's some spikes in certain parts of the screen. I just died. It's real hard to do this at the same time. It is really hard to play this game and try to tape at the same time. <laughs> and if you do get down to like one, what's going to happen? is the last one remaining is going to get super fast and I don't think I'm going to make it because this is my last life. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and turn the system off here. But yeah, here's the keyboard. You know, uh, English and Japanese characters. And um, I'm going to go ahead and change this jumper. I'm, I'm kind of curious here. I'm going to change this to the 32 and leave it on the US BIOS. Um, I think I tried this and I still could not get the unit to to boot up on basic. Let's see what happens here. Let's try graphic again. See what happens here. Oh yeah, this is the little graphic editor. Um, you can do all kind of very simplistic things from what I understand. I have never messed with it, but uh, now that we know we can get into that, let's see if basic will work here. Again, this is using the US ROM and I've got it on the 32. So let's go down to basic. Nope, it's not happy. It just rebooted. <laughs> so let's try something different. Let's take out the cartridge. So I'm gonna set this phone down here for one second. Get this cartridge out. Now the cartridge is out. Just in case that's interfering with the ROM space. We're gonna type basic. Nope. Still did not work. Let's try another combination. Let's try the 16 with the US BIOS with no cartridge. And we get a lovely lockup. Okay, fine. I'll do it your way. Let's go to the Japanese BIOS, which is something we have not tried quite yet. Okay, so now we're at the Japanese bias, and we have the jumper set to 32K. Okay, 
So let's go down the base, G basic it's called. Okay, this looks like basic, but all the characters are in Japanese, it looks like. I, so I have no idea if this is working. I can actually hold down one of these keys and get English, like list. But I don't get really any response. So I'm guessing this is Japanese, and the basics working with it in Japanese, but it's not uh, working with it in, Eng in the English BIOS. So that's just curious. Let's last permutation here. Let's leave it on the Japanese BIOS and put it on 16. Okay, well, I mean, I have basic again. I have basic, and then guess what? It reset the computer, so it needs to be on the Japanese basic on, you know, or the Japanese BIOS, which is number one, and on the 32 jumper for basic to work, it looks like. Um, I don't know why. Maybe the US basic just isn't in here, or, uh, or just the Japanese version of this does not want to run the, the US basic, but. Um, there's also a kill switch on this thing, which um, I'm going to go ahead. Let's move it back to the US BIOS. Leave it on 32. And let's. Um, I will put some switches on this thing rather than these jumpers because this is quite annoying. Okay, now I'm back in the US BIOS. And there's basic. So the only other thing I can really do. I think I think it's established it needs to be on 32 in Japanese, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove that kill jumper. I'm just kind of curious. Oh, it does not like that. Okay. Let's see, how about the kill jumper with it on 16? Nope. Okay. Well, I'm guessing the kill jumper. You'd think it would just disable this instead of... This is on 32 Japanese BIOS with no kill jumper in it. Seems to be working, but again, basic is in Japanese. So this might just be Japanese ROM basic that's, that's on this chip. Um, there's an actually, this is just a, it's a standard, it's a win bond, it's a 512K chip, I believe. Um, and there's a nice little gal here that it controls, I'm guessing, the bank switching and the, and the, um, the stuff for the, for the particular ROM cartridges that are, that are plugged in here. Let me go ahead and put this kill switch back on. So we know BASIC runs with Japanese BIOS and the ROM size at 32. And um, this little cartridge is kind of cool. Again, there's a gal up here for bank switching. This little jumper changes the games between uh, Door Door and TI Scramble. And again, there's a nice little um, 27C512 you know, uh, chip here, 64K chip, that's got Door Door and half of it, which is 32K, and it's got 32K for TI Scramble. And there's a little RAM chip here. Um, uh, CXK58. 257p so i'm not sure 32k ram chip or something i'm i'm guessing um, it's not immediately obvious from the part number but uh some of the things i'm going to try to do is uh, i'm going to check the basic uh, interpreter that that is in this particular bank and since i do have the u.s basic rom which was i believe a 16k rom it was the second rom in the system in the u.s i'm going to try maybe replacing that Japanese basic um, with the US basic and see with the US BIOS if I can get the system to actually launch English basic. Um, that's about the only other thing I'm going to mess with. Um, in the back here, you can kind of see a little bit. There's a there's a cassette cable. I'm going to try to see if I can get a friend to make one for me. Um, and sorry for the upside down picture here. Um, this is where the RF modulator went. This is the same pinout, I believe, as a TRS-80 or a color computer cassette cable. Um, so that should be pretty easy to get done. So if I can get into BASIC and I can get the cassette cable hooked up, I can actually play with loading and saving programs. Um, but anyway, this is the Tomy Tutor. Ooh, boy, that sounds like a TI when you make it that happy. 
Um, but this is pretty much the Tommy Tutor. It is very much like the TI 994A in that uh, Klaus Lucas check um, has actually found a lot of the same extended basic code inside of the US basic ROM. And, you know, this is really cool. You got a color bar screen just like the TI 994A. You know, the Japanese color bar screen and then the. Uh, and then the and then the U.S. one, the bars were on the side and they move around. So, it, you know, there had to be some kind of collaboration between Texas Instruments and and, and Tomy um, on this particular device. There's just no way that um, it ju this just could have happened like this. And also, um, the the cartridge port is is identical in dimensions. The cartridges are almost exact for a TI-99. So if we if we go over here, and I'm not going to actually. Um, plug one of these in while this system is on. So I'm gonna turn this thing off, but um, the system's completely off. But the TI cartridge plugs straight into it, which is, it's kind of scary how identical the, the cartridge is. And we actually looked at the pinout, and the pinout for this cartridge, the TI and the and the Tomy, is actually probably about 75, 80% the same. Um, the Tomy actually has Grom lines just like the TI-99 does. So if that's not a hint that these things were pretty darn close in architecture, I guess, I guess, you know, the, the cartridge and the, um, the Grom lines are. So anyway, thanks for watching my little short intro of this uh, Tomy Piuta or Tomy Tutor. And um, if you have any ideas of the, any of the issues that I was having or any suggestions or, or what have you, please, please, please feel free to put them down in the comments. Um, I, again, um, I highly suggest if you do get one of these, make sure you get a 100 volt step down transformer. Um, I had to import this from Amazon Japan, but this thing can handle up to 80 watts. And I think this computer only takes like 14 watts. So, um, this actually does have, um, uh, it's not, uh, a square wave. It's, it's actually got a, like a transformer or something inside of it. So it is completely safe, standard sine wave AC. So. Um, anyway, thanks a lot. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.